It's Friday night, it's almost live, and it's right up a big tower in London's Westminster. It's Sam Delaney's News Thing. Happy New Year, dickheads. War, terror, hoverboards. 2015 has had the lot. So sit back, pour yourself a Bailey's and cream soda, and reminisce about all the best bits with our panel of moderately priced comedians and our very special guests, MPs Johnny Mercer and Mike Freer, and feminist icon Jermaine Greer. Should you watch this bunch of rehash clips while you're pissed up on wine? Or spend it with loved ones instead and pretend your family's fine? Whee! Happy New Year! Here's the best bits of news thing. Yeah, that's right, the best bits. It's been a terrible week for news, especially for a satirical news show like this one. There are, of course, no laughs to be had from the atrocities in Paris. The images the world saw last Friday were sickening. So, as a caveat at the top of the show, let me put on record that we are absolutely and vehemently against terrorism. And while we're at it, here are some other things that we're against. Nazis, Jimmy Savile, murder. But, of course, it would be insulting to your intelligence and borderline insulting to the people of Paris to bang on about the bleeding obvious, right? Some things just don't need to be said. But that hasn't stopped people saying it all over Facebook and Twitter for the past week. At a time like this, when the world has borne witness to such tragedy, and we have as a human race shared in all that pain and horror together, well, it really brings out the worst in us. I mean, all due respect, but social media this week was a right sack of dickheads, wasn't it? <laughs> like Rupert Murdoch. He tweeted, Obama facing enormous opposition in accepting refugees, maybe make special exception for proven Christians? What do you want them to do? Come in on a fucking ark? Bring some myrrh? Then there were the dickheads who suddenly dressed up the self-indulgent bullshit they fill their ridiculous lives with as acts of defiant heroism. ISIS needn't think that they'll scare me out of going down the pub to neck a ton of WKDs tonight. I shall not be cowed. I, for one, refuse to let these jihadists intimidate me out of going to the Apple store and using my credit card to buy an iPad mini. I'm on a bus in London, fuck you terrorists. Come on. Some people got murdered by a bunch of twats 500 miles away. You are not at war. Westfield shopping centre is not the front line. You didn't bravely throw yourself on a grenade to save your mates. You're just another bullshitting narcissist with an oyster card. But let's not forget those who really did stand up and show courage this week. Like the spine tingling display of unity from football fans. This was humanity at its best. <laughs> Stand up if you hate ISIS. And look at that, some of them really did stand up. That'll show them. Imagine all those jihadis sitting back after a hard week of terror to enjoy the League Two all-important six-pointer clash between Portsmouth and Wimbledon. I bet they're quaking in their desert boots. <laughs> then you've got the dickheads lecturing us for caring too much about the French because there's other dead people in other parts of the world that we didn't care about enough as well. It's not enough to care, you see. You have to care in the right way. I mean, look at all the sticks guys Kay Burley got on Twitter for this. Sadness in his eyes. All she did was try and capture the mood of the Western world through the medium of dog's face. <laughs> and everyone takes the piss. I tell you what, taking that pic takes a lot more effort than sticking a French flag on your Facebook profile picture. I tell you what, it's a good bloody photo. Could win one of those wildlife photography awards <laughs> if dogs count as wildlife. I don't know, ask Chris Packham, this is a bloody serious news show. Uh, panel, what else do we know about ISIS? Felicity, you know, people are sudden experts. Did yes. you know much about them? I didn't, but I've watched a lot of YouTube clips and I found right. that very educational. What, I've, what I was told, so if there's any ISIS people watching, this is not coming from me. Apologies in advance Apologies if you're in factually advance. inaccurate. Okay. Yes. They are saying that ISIS aren't actually a massive organisation, but they are taking credit for a lot of other people's work. And that makes me sad because what they're doing is they're bullying and overshadowing up and coming terrorists that aren't given the space to like find out what their name is and what they do. They're like, it's like ISIS is 
a multi-corporation, and then you've got these little independent terrorists who are like struggling to... It's like to, a franchise. Yeah, they're struggling Much to like set up KFC. their small business. Exactly. I had to joke mm. next once, so I know how they feel. But the PR <laughs> and marketing, I feel like the PR and marketing is, you know, they're quite good at that. PR is wonderful, definitely. Mm. Marketing, though, they're like, are they ISIS? Are they ISIL? Right. Are they Daesh? Mm. And yeah. you mentioned KFC. You get you get one chance to change your name. Like, Kentucky Fried Chicken went to KFC. Yes. Uh, methylated uh, crystal meth went to ice yeah. you know you get Norwich Union became Aviva exactly mm. uh, they said it wouldn't work it did exactly mm. but mm. was this was a symbol yeah. but then went back he went, then back. He went back successfully you get you get one or two chances and then people stop losing they start to lose faith in you and I think that ISIS are going to face that David what is their core message what's their agenda because there's disagreement over that too well Sam Delaney it's hard to know I'll tell you what I'm mostly worried about I am convinced they're going to strike in the UK next. Mm. And I'll tell you why. What are they going to hit? Well, I'll tell you why. Listen, ISIS, terrorists, jihadis in Syria are fed up with all these Brits going over there, stealing their jobs. Mm. Now, <laughs> making roadside bombs, indiscriminate killings, beheadings, those are Syrian jobs for Syrians. You're quite right. Right? But now that whole region has literally been swamped with mouthy kids from Brixton who think <laughs> that fighting the Kurdish Peshmerga is like playing Grand Theft Auto. You know? <laughs> and it's not, Sam. It's hard work going to war for ISIS because you got to get up in the morning and you got to fight the enemy. You got to race across the desert. You got to fight another enemy and you got to do all that in your pajamas. <laughs> it's literally it's like having a job. That's the last thing these kids want. I don't know what's coming. Uh, just lastly, can we now say that ISIS are history's biggest twats or is that title still held by well, the Bee Gees? Oh. It's well, borderline, Paris. isn't it? Mm, tough one. That is a tough one. Tough one. The first big challenge they've had in years, right? Yeah. Yeah. It really depends on ISIS's next single. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see what their next move is. Thanks, guys. Well, you'd have to be living on Mars not to know that tomorrow the Chancellor will deliver the autumn statement and lay out his four-year plan in the spending review. You'd have to be living on Mars. George Osborne is planning deep cuts to departments which aren't protected. Indeed, the NHS in England and Wales is to get a windfall. So, does the real austerity start here? Let's talk about the Prime Minister, David Cameron. Oh, he's so awful. He's such a posh twat with his big red face. No, he's not. He's awesome. He put his knob in a pig's mouth, and another time, he got so pissed, he left his kid in a pub. He's a right laugh. <laughs> Only trouble with him is that he is a bit thick. In fact, you could say he is as thick as the shit of the pig that he fucked. Last <laughs> September, he wrote a stern letter to Oxfordshire County Council, which covers his own constituency, expressing his anger over proposed cuts to local services. I was disappointed at the long list of suggestions floated in the briefing note to make significant cuts to frontline services, from elderly day centres to libraries to museums. Right, those will be the cuts made by the government that you're the boss of. Fuck me, it's like listening to a hairdresser complain about the haircut he's just given himself. And he goes on. This is in addition to the unwelcome and counterproductive proposals to close children's centres across the county. What? He's like Lenny out of Mice and Men crushing his own mouse to death, then getting angry because it stopped working. Like, wake up! Wake up! <laughs> <laughs> Next, he starts lecturing them on how to save a few quid. <laughs> the briefing note made no mention of the work that could be done to generate savings in a more creative manner. Yeah, what kind of operation does he think they're actually running out there in Oxfordshire? Does he think they've got a swimming pool made out of pound coins that councillors do the fucking backstroke in like Scrooge McDuck? The scariest thing in this is that it suggests the Prime Minister cannot establish any links whatsoever between his actions in government and their consequences for the country, which is almost like the dictionary definition of a psychopath. Uh, May Martin, is David Cameron a psychopath or is he just very thick? Um, I think the latter, I think. It's really mind-boggling though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I have a flatmate that binge drinks and yeah. then he gets up in the morning and it's like, what? Like, it's a mess. Why, is there, why are the pillows on the floor? Why is there, why are there slices of pizza on the toilet seat? But he. He did it while he was drunk. Mm. It's like that. It's like. Do you think David Cameron's almost? It's like that. He blacks out from time to time. Yeah, maybe, and just commits, signs a bunch of. Uh, yeah, commits horrific kind of legislative crimes against the country, then wakes up feeling guilt-ridden. Yeah. Listen, Sam Delaney. Uh, David Cameron's under a lot of pressure. He literally in Oxfordshire is literally having to separate his own recycling. Mm. <laughs> That's... They've literally reduced the hours of the swimming pool. 
<laughs> What's the man supposed to do? Yeah. He's got to, he's had, it's desperate times, call for desperate measures, write a letter. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, letter. at least he put his money where his mouth is. Holly, you're from Newcastle. Yeah. So you've no idea how these poor people in impoverished no. places like Oxfordshire must get by. Can I just say, in Oxfordshire, they have libraries, apparently, that they're making <laughs> cuts to. Well, let me tell you something. I've lived in London for a while now. We don't even have libraries in London, mate. We've got idea stores. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what we've got here. So we should be thankful. Oh, and there are so many other cuts to be made. You've got to be quick. Christmas decorations. Yeah. <laughs> Diwali. Right. Yeah. Uh, bonfire night. Cut those services so people can finally get to the library. Do you know what? You're right. You do see extremely extravagant Christmas deckies in certain Entirely parts of the country. And Oxford yeah. is exactly the sort of place that would have the real fancy pants ones. Mm. Your John Lewis ones, as opposed to your Woolies ones. Yeah. I know Woolies doesn't exist anymore. Holly, you're the only person who knows what Woolies is. Yeah. Um, uh, well, because I'm old. Uh, no, because you, <laughs> you grew up in Britain. Yeah, that's true. It's like someone is saying to Thatcher, oh, by the way, you closed all the pits. Do you remember? So you've got... And she's complaining about there's nothing to put a fire. You yeah, know? she's like, where's yeah. my fucking well, coal? And where's the milk for my for Mark and Carol? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, by the way, the Falklands, I can't go on holiday then anymore, uh, yeah. well, you know. Yeah, mind I mean, you, Mark on. could have done with more prolonged Mark, breastfeeding, in my Mark opinion. Mark could have done with a lot it's, more. It's a separate issue. There's, a, pro there's yeah. a problem with Mark, definitely. But this is where the big society is supposed to stay. Step in, isn't yes, it? True. I mean, this is where David Cameron's supposed to open his home, open his own library to the use mm. of the local people. Yeah. He should be jumping in there and providing these services as part of the greater community, the big society. What happened to that? Good point. The, uh, the big society, they pissed up the wall ages ago. They actually sacked the guy who had come up with the I didn't. I had to open my lounge to a family of Syrians. What are you talking about? Well, that's I'm very still good on board. David! David, you're a bigger man David! than most of us. Uh, guys, thank you very much. That's it for now. Uh, we're going to be back in part two with the iconic <laughs> and marvellous Jermaine Greer. Hey, it's New Year's, a time when we traditionally make resolutions we abandon a little while later. You know the kind of thing. I'm going to get fit. I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to stop having affairs. This year, my New Year's resolution is to make some great new episodes of Sam Delaney's News Thing. Now it's 2016, but we're going to show some old stuff from 2015, which means I've time for one last affair. Happy New Year! Now it's been a week of storms with images of flooding and people leaving their homes as Storm Desmond wreaks havoc across the country. And once again, we look to the government for some sort of guidance. Now, this is a show where we pride ourselves on saying the unsayable. We will not kowtow to the status quo like all those other mainstream lickspittles who only tell you what you want to hear. So let me, Sam Delaney, say right here, right now, it is unseasonably clement for this time of year, in actual fact. But even with one of the mildest winters on record, at least the media have something to go batshit crazy about. I cannot repeat the advice often enough from the Gardaí. Don't make unnecessary journeys. Don't take risks on treacherous roads. And don't swim in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mate, we've all had a drink. In fact, that's why we're swimming in the sea in this bloody weather. But to be fair to her, at least she did go outside, not like this lazy bastard. special show news Mind you, let's not trivialise it. People have been flooded out en masse. Not that anyone in Cumbria is watching. All their tellies are soaked to fuck. So, panel, rain, who's to blame, Angela? Well, it's not the gays, is it? No. I mean, they'd like okay. us to think it Explain is. Explain why. But... Was it Nigel? No, it was some UKIP person was... thought that uh, gay marriage was to blame for the extreme weather. I, mm. I... Well, we don't know. It's not the gays. We don't have... Well, there has been a... That gay marriage is now legal True. and there is a lot of extreme weather. Well, I, I would hate to think there was a link, but let's, it's unknowable. Let's make gay marriage illegal for, I don't know, five, ten years. Let's see if there's an impact see on the weather. If the rain clears up. Okay. Yeah, good point. I mean, I'm quite impressed that we finally have some weather which uh, we can name. 
Mm. It's Dawn yeah. Desmond. Yeah. We don't normally Shit name. name. They should have called it Tyson Fury. Ah. That would be a hell of a good name for Aragon. Yes. Absolutely. Um, yeah, because normally our weather is so mild here, isn't it, that, that mm. you can't really name it. I mean, you can't have sort of Mild Patch Stephen. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you remember Mild Patch Stephen? Oh, yes, I remember I had to wear a, 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 quite a thin waterproof. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even when we had a hurricane, we didn't name it. We, we just called it The Hurricane. Yeah. Don't you? People say, yeah. do you remember The Hurricane? Yeah. And you go, yes, 1987, Michael Fish, The Hurricane. Yeah, yeah. Rene from a lower loan. That was Got a that billboard it in the his same head. One? It was. It, it, it was. It was two it years later. It was 1987. Later. Rene, I will. I will go was to it? my grave <laughs> contending let's, this. Let's hear the alternative All version right. of this. Sam. When do was, you say Rene Rene got hit? I in thought it was completely. Woods. There was like a year or two later. There was another big storm, and I thought that was the one that Rene got. Henry has just made, made the correct point <laughs> that it's known as the hurricane because there was only one hurricane. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. There was a, there was there was a little bit smaller a couple of years later, and I and that was what did for Rene. I think so. Yes. OK, bad news for me coming through from the gallery. Angela, you're right. It's not easy for me to say, but the uh, producers just told me that it was the 1990 storm that did for Rene. And you've indicated how I've it I feel. feel vindicated, thank you. I've always said it was very much British society's JFK moment. Oh, in yeah. As much as we all remember where we were when we heard that Rene from a lower low had been brained by an advertising <laughs> hoarding. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But I've almost disproved myself because I don't remember. Um, th the point is, you see all these people and they're moaning, saying, What are people, what are government going to do? Where is David Cameron? And Sam, you know, you know me, why they're moaning? Because they've got no fucking houses. I their understand houses that. Are flooded. Yeah. That's but why they're why? moaning. They're, they're allowed to moan. They're, they're at waters up to there. But why are they directing their anger at the Prime Minister because it fucking rained a lot? Doesn't part of you think, Mate, Get a fucking bucket or don't live in Cumbria. I don't think that they're, they're looking at David Cameron to change the weather. Is it not more how they deal with the emergency? They're not blaming him <laughs> for the weather. They would like someone in authority... What is wrong with you? You... you... Are you Nick Ferrari or something? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, are, they are looking to someone in authority to help them get their houses dried out and implement a system that will stop their houses from flooding again, like he said he'd do two years ago, and he didn't do it! I tell you what, <laughs> you may be abreast of your so-called facts, but I am the one doing something practical to confront these fucking storms, <laughs> which is more than Ian Lee or David Cameron have done or will ever do. I apologise. Time now for something a bit special, an exclusive report from award-winning investigative journalist David Hock, who this week has been looking into the rise in illegal immigrants masquerading as Santa Claus to enter the UK. Here he is with the Hock Report. Thank you, Sam. Wait, wait, shut up! Leave the noise down! David Hock! Yes, it's me, David Hock. After startling reports of illegal immigrants disguising themselves as Father Christmases to get into the UK, we've come to Ipswich to try and find some of the bastards. The Huck Report. Right, I have reports that you're an illegal immigrant. How are you doing, David Hawk? Well, let me fill you in. We've had reports that illegal immigrants are coming to this country dressed as Father Christmas and Santa Claus, you know, it's December, and the, the borders are just being kicked open by all these mad bastards. The situation is uh, they've had to shut the borders at Dover because th there's so many coming in and at Easter we're expecting up to 10,000 Easter bunnies coming in. So, I mean, it, it's not funny, it's not a laughing matter, sir. No, that's true, it's not a laughing matter. <laughs> Hello, sir. See, I've got you, haven't I? Huh? I've got you. I don't know you, mate. Let's see under the hat, huh? You having a laugh? What are you doing, mate? No, well, yeah, the thing, uh, illegal immigrants are coming to this country uh, dressed as Father Christmas, and yeah, I have but... reason to believe you might be an illegal immigrant. People no, are coming. Stop talking, mate. Like you know what I mean? There's no stop need to talking. swear. No, mate. There's no need to swear. You call me an illegal immigrant, mate. Well, yeah, you, know I mean? you look like it. I've got. Well, it says here. Look, 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 mate. Uh, let me tell you, mate. Yeah. Do you want to get up? No, 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 it's not right. Do you want to get up? What do you mean, livened up? I'll knock you out now, mate. No, no, no. So, so far today, we've been. Wait a minute, go! Go! Sanders! The illegal immigrants coming in! Shut up! Stop! 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 The illegal immigrants dressed as, dressed as Santa Claus. What's under the house? I know your game. You come in, there's thousands of illegal immigrants dressing like Santa Claus. Where are you from? Where are you from? We're from London. London? Yeah. Right, OK, as you were, apologies. What are you doing out for? From... No, we don't. Just go. Okay. So, so, enjoy your day. Merry Christmas. I've got you. I found you, haven't I? Eh? Excuse me. I found you, haven't I? You come here to milk our benefit system, 
I found you. I found you out. You've come into Milk Our Benefit System and leech off the system. The government is not on. I'm working and I'm fucking English now. Fuck off. All right. Fucking. All right. Calm down. You just got to jog on, mate. You know what I mean? Well, right. Why don't you jog on? Because I've got you know. Okay, mate. Where's your documents? What, you what, you, what do you mean? No, 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 no. It's all right. It's all right. Excuse me, sir. I have reason to believe you, you're an illegal immigrant. What have you got to say about that, please? Oh! Hey! Hey! Get back here! Hey! You! Illegal immigrant! Hey! Illegal immigrant! Stop him! Hey! Hey, you! Stop that slanter! Hey! Hey, you bastard! Hey! Get... Right! Call immigration! I've got you! Call immigration! Santa is an illegal immigrant! Get out! Get out! Get out! He's an illegal immigrant! More evil wrongdoers brought to justice! It's me, David Hawk! Get down! Back to you, Sam! In the studio! Call immigration! Call immigration! Hey, get back here! The Hawk Report. I found that an uncomfortable viewing, to be honest. I found that a bit sickening. Award winning journalist, I think David Hawk is, is an ignorant moron. Don't know how we allowed him on the show, <laughs> frankly. David Cameron called those who oppose airstrikes in Syria terrorist sympathisers. Are you Johnny Mercer when he's going on the record right now by saying that that was a fucking stupid thing to say? Look, he didn't say that everyone who votes against this is a terrorist sympathiser. He was talking specifically about Jeremy Corbyn and, and John McDonnell, who in the past have said things that you could be forgiven for thinking they were terrorist sympathisers. So that was his point. Um, you know, whether or not, um, you know, that came out... It could bit wait, sweeping out and Larry for a Prime Minister, isn't it? I mean, yeah, sweeping and Larry is yeah, not but, what we necessarily want the PM to be. Well, you know, but you want someone with a bit of passion, someone who cares, and you can't really argue with his core facts. So, you know, that's what he chose not, to do. That, but that's the point, though, isn't it? It's not a core fact. It was sort of well, like the a John sweeping... McDonald, the John it was McDonald a sweeping, Jeremy Corbyn. snide No, thing. no, cause he because he wasn't. Also, that's how the media translated it. But there that's are lots of people across. around the country who don't want to bomb Syria. Yeah, and the Prime Minister's not calling them terrorists. I know, but that's how people felt. Yeah, but that's because... But they're that's wrong the way... to feel that way, right? Yeah, because that's where it's portrayed in the media. That's not what actually happened in the meeting. One-on-one, -on -one, could you fight off ISIS? What do you think of these characters? Do you think that, you know, it's sort of... Because I always think when you see the videos of them and you hear all about them and you hear their slogans like, we love death more than you love <laughs> life, right? Which is a snappy slogan. As, abhor as abhorrent as it is, it yeah. is snappy, right? Yeah. Um, do you think that... Without being flippant, it sounds like they've got an amazing PR machine that makes them out to be almost like these kind of evil villains from a James Bond movie. Um, I think, um, you know, they're pretty fucking sad, really. I mean, you look at the guys who go over there and join right. them, OK? They're vulnerable people a lot of the time. Yeah. Who are looking for something, want to be part of something, want to be mates, you know. Are they religious? No, of course they're not. You know, they're basically... They trade on the sort of inhum man's inhumanity to man, so fear and all the rest of it. It's all about self-interest. They just want to establish things for their own power, their own self-interest. They, they're a pathetic bunch of people who... Uh, you know, would like to think of themselves as some evil death killers, but the truth is, when they when they get a knock on the door from um, um, from some people I used to work with, they're not, they're not going to last very long. Yeah, we'll soon see them on their toes, as they would say. Well, we'll see. It's time to play. Who do you reckon might be gay? With this week's special guest, Conservative MP Mike Freer. Tyson Fury. The mad boxer who says that gay marriage is a sign that Satan's on his way. Well, those who protest too much, maybe they've got a dark secret they want to share. But I'm not going to say yes, because he's got a hell of a thump. Mm, yeah, OK, so we don't really know no, what you think, no. because you're answering out of fear. Yeah. OK, let's look at our next contestant, uh, ISIS. This is an ISIS soldier. A lot of them. Um, they're wearing the old glamouflage, of course, which uh, has had its... I don't know gay if it's still like fashionable. Uniforms. You probably don't go to gay discos anymore. Discos? you're settled down married Showing your man. age now. Sorry, yeah, well... Yeah, I mean, I call all night... <laughs> all night spots of any description I call a disco. Okay. All these... All the brothers coming together in that kind of camouflage chic. Yeah, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? It's a yes. <laughs> you go on, we'll say yes. OK, yeah. that's a yes. They're coming for me anyway, so... Um, <laughs> and our last contestant on who do you reckon might be gay? Theresa May? Definitely not. Definitely not? Definitely How not. How can you be so certain? Because I've met her husband. you met... Oh, so you're sitting here as a gay man 
telling me that there are no gay people who are married to members of the opposite sex. Didn't say that. Didn't you met her that. husband means yeah. nothing, does it? I met her, I think she's lovely. But I don't think she's gay. Fair enough. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for playing our game, Who Do You Reckon Might Be Gay? Is there a prize? Uh, there is no prize, I'm afraid, other than the sense of pride you get at discovering that your gaydar might not have been quite so rusty as you worried I thought I was about. Get a date with Donald Think Trump. of this as us applying a bit of WD-40 <laughs> to your gaydar. Thank you very much. Help me, Jermaine. I think I'm a sexist. Yeah, there we have it. Help me, Jermaine. I think I might be a sexist. Some of the young lads, they do get very confused about how to conduct themselves around women. Uh, we've got some of them here with their questions which they would like you to answer. Let's hear the first. I was on the bus. Uh, there was a woman. At least I think she was a woman. Aged about 48. I offered her my seat. Does that make me sexist? No. I'm interested that you thought she was aged about 48. It's almost as if he counted the rings as if she was a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a very specific guess he made, isn't it? They're eccentric people, these young men. No, but the interesting thing is, you offer your seat to someone who's, have di who's having difficulty standing. Mm. It doesn't matter what sex they are. There you go. Uh, let's take the second dilemma. This is from young Josh. I don't find female bodybuilders attractive unless they wear high heels, like they sometimes do in bodybuilding competitions. Does that make me sexist? Mm. He doesn't like female bodybuilders. He doesn't find them attractive unless they're in heels. I don't either. Mm. I don't find them attractive at all. No, not do Does I. Does that make me a sexist? I don't know. If you don't know, then we're all screwed. I don't think I find bo bodybuilders attractive. It makes me think of the craze. It makes me kind of nervous. <laughs> he, the point is, Josh is confused. He thinks that it makes him sexist to not find that kind of physical form attractive. As if he thinks it's masculine and therefore unattractive. Unless they're wearing high heels. Mm, yeah. I think he's got a bigger problem in that he's a shoe fetishist. Yeah, quite right. <laughs> OK, lastly, here we've got Paddy. I love horror films, but I can't watch horror films with women in them because I don't find women scary. I like horror films where there are women topless in them, but they're still not scary. <laughs> Does that make me sexist? <laughs> Who was it who had a nightmare that a woman had eyes instead of nipples? Oh, my God. I think it was Shelley, and he woke up screaming. I tell you what, that doesn't sound like a nightmare to me. It sounds deeply arousing. Oh, really? Mm. You want to be looked at? Yeah, by a pair of breasts. <laughs> I don't know why, Jermaine. Who knows why we all have these different tastes. Jermaine Greer, that's all we've got time for. Thank you ever so much for joining us here. Real honour to meet you and talk to you. Jermaine, you've given me the greatest Christmas gift of all, the gift of thinking about being less of a sexist.